Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for joining us again at God's Way Community Church. Amen. We thank God for you being uh, in the audience at home or wherever you are listening to the video right now, if you're tuning in. And we pray that God has been blessing you throughout the week. We thank God for he uh, has kept us so far through the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And we pray that you are being blessed as well. Amen. For those who are sick uh, with the pandemic, uh, we have the uh, with the virus, we have been uh, praying for you, and we continue to do so because we know that God is a healing God. So we want to give glory and honor to God because he is going to heal. Amen. He is the only one who can heal. Amen. We thank God for that. Amen. So we have to just say we, we, we appreciate your prayers. Those of you who have been praying for the church, praying for the ministry, praying for uh, the things that we are doing, trying to reach the people of God. We thank God for you doing that. Amen. Those of you who have uh, given of your time and your effort and your finances, we certainly thank God for you, and we pray a special blessing on your life for that. Uh, we know that sometimes it is uh, difficult for us to do things how we want to do them, and we'd all rather be in church, in our church building, but it's because of your support, it's because of your continual uh, listening to the video, your continual desire to hear the Word of God, that keeps us inspired to do God's work and keeps us moving forward. So we appreciate all that you do in praying for us. Amen. And Paul even prayed that, told the saints to pray for him that he would have boldness to speak as he ought to speak. Amen. Now, even in this hour when things are getting tough and people don't realize, but even the pastor needs to be prayed for. The pastor needs to be prayed for so that he would have boldness to stand in the pulpit of God and preach without fear or favor. Amen. Amen. That's a very uh, important thing in this day and age that we live in. So we thank God for you. May God bless you is our prayer. May God keep you and smile upon you and lift up his countenance upon you and your family. Amen. Turn in our, your Bibles or with your application or whatever you're using to uh, follow us along with the scriptures today. And we're going to go just for a short while to the book of 1 Samuel. Amen. Chapter number 10. I'm going to read just a couple of verses there. The whole of our text is taken from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 10, down to verse number maybe 35 or 36. But, uh, but we're just going to read a few verses here and give you a subject, and we'll work with that as we go forward. Amen. 1 Samuel, to say it again, chapter number 10. Amen. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 6. And we're going to read verses 6 and verse 7. Just a couple of verses, some short reading today, amen, to give us our text and get us launched in the right direction for the Word of God today. 1 Samuel chapter number 10, verse number 6. I'll begin reading that, and it reads here, and it says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. And let it be when these signs are come unto thee that thou do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. Amen. Pray for us and then pray with us as we uh, uh, ask God's blessing on the word of God. Father, your blessed name, we thank you, Lord, for the goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your continued faithfulness. Father, we thank you for the word of God that's going to go out to the souls that need to be touched and healed. And those that need to be convinced, convicted, and converted, oh God, we ask that your word go out and not return unto you void, but accomplish that which you have purposed it to accomplish. We give you the praise and the glory for all that you have done. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your goodness, your mercy. Even in the midst of a pandemic, you are a great God. Even in the midst of our troubles, you are magnificent. And we give you the praise and glory and the honor. We ask your blessings upon this service, upon the, those hearers, and the speaker of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. Amen. But I feel encouraged. Amen. I feel encouraged because God is a great God. Amen. He is a wonderful God. Amen. And he's able to do all things. Amen. I'd like to turn your attention to our text today, not to preach very long. We know people, amen, are not used to very long sermons anymore, amen, but even though you are somewhat uh, a captive audience in the sense that we don't go out as much as we do anymore, we don't go, we're not having church uh, in the building, amen, we realize, amen, that your time is precious. 
and amen, so that we're going to bring the word of God to you coming from 1 Samuel chapter 10, amen. I'd like to use for a subject, Samuel says to Saul uh, in verse number 6, and the spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. I, I wish somebody in their audience could say another man, amen. You shall be turned into another man. So our subject for today is be transformed. Be transformed. Amen. Amen. Be transformed. Um, it has been said that the Babylonians are, at least they have been given credit, for being the nation that brought us what we have in today's time that we call New Year's resolutions. Uh, some 4,000 plus years ago, it is said that the Babylonians were the first to actually begin to celebrate uh, New Year's, uh, what they call the New Year, which took place somewhere in the uh, beginning of spring and March. But they are given the credit for uh, uh, launching what we now hear so much about in terms of New Year's resolutions. And as, as the history goes, uh, their particular uh, methodology of, uh, uh, of resolutions are, were all around uh, are mostly around religious things where they 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 promised or they, they they swore that they would do certain things so that they could gain the favor of the gods or their pagan gods and and they felt that if they they held true to to things like uh, paying what they owed and uh, uh, keeping their word and all this sort of thing that the gods would favor them and so then uh, that was how uh, our New Year's resolutions were born and so. Uh, but what, however they were born, uh, and, and, and we have many people today that have made New Year's resolutions, but however they came about, and whatever country it was that was given the credit for uh, actually bringing them into being, uh, what they do show us is this, and, and, I, and I think this is an interesting thing. It shows us that uh, for years, many years ago, even in ancient times, men and women understood that we needed to change that we needed to have something go on to make us better, amen, than we were before, or to do something in some aspect of our life better than what we were doing it previously, amen. And I think that's a good thing because sometimes, amen, it, it pays to have a, an outlook on uh, where you are, to kind of keep one eye on uh, improvement, as, as some companies deal a lot with uh, uh, personal change and improvement and growth. And so it shows us that people, even way back in ancient times, understood that we needed change, that uh, we needed to, to keep our minds on improving somewhat. Now, unfortunately, uh, many of them that bought into the idea of, of resolutions, which basically is a, de a decree or a pledge or, or a promise to do something. Now, some people might want to call it a declaration, if you want to call it that. Uh, but uh, that's basically what it is. Uh, but unfortunately, many times what we find is that, that when people make such pledges, they weren't able to keep them, and they didn't keep those pledges. And many of them were superficial, and uh, sometimes there were things that had to do with uh, the outside, and not, not so much as the internal man. And so then we see that even today, in the year 2020, uh, it, it was said on one, one website that I saw said that some 74% of people in America, that's roughly 190 million people, amen, in America made the resolutions uh, because people uh, uh, want to change. But if only we could come to a point that we could see that real change, real change has to come from the inside. Only if we could get to the point that we could understand that we need God to help us in our changing methodologies, then God can help us. So we turn our, our attention to our text, and, and in 1 Samuel, we, we have, it's interesting that we're talking about change in the, the new year, because when we look at our text, we get the, 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 the picture that Israel was going through a great change. As we read in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 10, Israel was on the brink of change, as a matter of fact. The nation as a whole was changing. What we read about in 1 Samuel is that Samuel was the last of a long line of judges. After about 400 years of different judges since Joshua died, Samuel was the last one. And the nation was at a point that they wanted to change. And Samuel was getting old and he was getting to a point that he was about to die. And so he had thought to put his 
sons as judges to continue the legacy. But when he went to do that, the elders met with him and said, we don't want your sons. They told Samuel, your sons are not like you. They're not good men like you are, Samuel. And so we don't want them. But we want change. And so Samuel, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, little in terms of what he would, he spoke to them. But what, what kind of change are you talking about? We don't want to be like we were anymore. We want a king who is going to rule over us like all the other nations around us. Let me tell you something, somebody. The moment you decide you're going to trade God for man's leadership, you are moving in the wrong direction. Amen. Amen. But they, they didn't want to hear Samuel. They said, we want a king because everybody else wants one. Amen. Everybody else has one. And uh, they began to cry to Samuel and said, give us a king. We want to change. So, so God spoke to Samuel after so many times of him talking to them. And, and Samuel was hurt by the fact that they didn't want his sons to be judges. And they didn't want to be under God's rule any longer. Samuel was hurt by that. And the Lord spoke to him and said, go ahead and give them what they want because they are not rejecting you. Huh? They are rejecting me. And then so Samuel spoke to the elders and, and God told him, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you the king that you wanted to. And so then at the very uh, movement at this time, as we talk about change, Israel was changing in a very epic way. They were changing in a very momentous way. They were going from being ruled by God, what we normally call a theocracy. Amen. They were moving from a theocratic rule to one of a, of a monarch. They they had a king that was going to sit over them and praise God. Amen. So change was coming down the pipe. And but, but thank God that God was looking down the road. Hallelujah. How many people know that God is looking out for you while you're thinking about changing? God is looking at what you really need. While you're thinking about changing on the outside, God's focusing on what you need on the inside. While you're thinking about fixing up things a little bit, God is thinking about a complete makeover. God is thinking about redoing the whole thing. Amen. So then they needed a king and they wanted a change. So thank God that God realized that things needed to be different. You see, God is not interested in just a facade. He's not interested in just an outside thing. One person said he's not interested uh, in a dress up from the neck up. God is interested in the whole being being changed. And he knew that even though the nation would not have him as their direct government or leadership in government, he knew that it was best for the nation if they had a man in the seat who had the Spirit of God with him. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you right now, anytime you have a man that's righteous in leadership, uh, you're going to have a better chance than you got with anybody else. Uh, if you can get somebody that's got God on their side, man, you might have something going on there. If you can get somebody who's connected uh, to the power of God, uh, you certainly have a better chance. Uh, if you can get somebody who knows how to pray, uh, if you can get somebody who's in connection with the throne of grace, uh, then you can get something going on. Uh, but God knew that the nation needed a man that was not just an ordinary person. They needed somebody that had undergone a change. They needed somebody that had undergone not just a change on the outside, but a transformation. Yeah. And God said, I'm going to pick a man for you. I'm going to pick one for you. And he does that. And so we're reading here in the first Samuel chapter 10. Samuel is talking to Saul and Samuel is pouring the oil on Saul. You read that from the verse, verse number one down through verse number six and seven where we read. And Samuel anoints him and he tells him God has selected you to be the king. But amen, we're going to get to the point right here where God is going to say, I'm going to do something new. So Samuel begins to instruct Saul. He says, now listen, I want to tell you this. And you can read this for yourself through verses five and six. He gets to the point that he says, uh, there's going to be a change, but uh, there's going to be a transformation of you. You're going to be a new man. He said, listen, you're going to come to the heel of God, and you're going to see these people with uh, three kids and uh, some bread, and they're going to give you some of that food. And when you come along, you're going to see some prophets, and, and the prophets are going to be singing. They're going to be praying harps and music. I got news for somebody. God likes music in his church. Uh, amen. Some people don't think you should worship with string instruments. You read First Samuel in chapter 10 and get back to me on that. 
because they were coming down. The Bible says they were coming down from the hill of God. They were coming down from the from the high place. The high place was the place that they went to worship. And when they were coming back, the Bible says Samuel told them they will be playing their hearts and these prophets are going to be singing. But you're going to come in their midst. And he said, when you come into the midst of these prophets, the spirit of the Lord shall come upon you, Saul. You, you, you used to be a farmer's son, but oh, today you're going to go through a transformation. You, the spirit of God's going to come upon you. And when the spirit of God comes upon you, you're going to begin to prophesy like all the other prophets. And when the spirit comes, you listen to me, somebody. Somebody need to know that when God uh, falls on you with the spirit, you need to let go and not quench the spirit of God. The Holy Ghost will come upon you and you will begin to move according to the will of God. And he told Saul, when the spirit comes upon you, let it go. Do whatever is occasion to you, for God is with you. When God gives you a transformation, it's going to be something that's going to be real and something that's going to be outgoing. And people are going to recognize it. So Saul came down, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he began to prophesy. He began to, to prophesy. And the people looked at Saul and said, man, what's going on here? See, change means alteration. But there is a, an alteration and then there is variation. But when you get to a deeper part of change, when you get to transformation, transformation goes deeper than just an alteration. Transformation is translation. It is conversion. It takes you from being one thing to another. It is a complete makeover. Uh, I, you've heard people, many times we've said this, we've heard people say, oh man, uh, oh, you, you, you look like you've lost some weight. Uh, and uh, then the reverse of that, oh, you gained some. Uh, and then we've seen that in some people. Uh, amen. So sometimes that's an outside thing. Uh, and then we've seen times where people have uh, remodeled a place that, oh man, this doesn't even look like the same place anymore. Uh, they put a little paint up on the outside. and Oh, that looks nice. This is nice. They call it a touch-up. And some people say, oh, they have a nice touch-up. But God's not interested in a touch-up. Amen. God's not interested in that. He's interested in a make-up, a make-over, a do-over from the inside. He's interested in transformation, which is translation, which is the old creature becoming dead and the new creature coming on the scene. Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. God's not interested in a resolution. He's interested in a solution. He's not interested in you just making a declaration. God wants to take you to another level. He wants to change you from the inside. Friend, when you get ready to make your resolution today, you ask God, God, what do I need today from you? I don't need to make another pledge. I need you to give me the Holy Ghost. I need to be transformed from the inside out. I need to be made over so I can do the things you want me to do. I need to be the kind of man or woman you need me to be. I need to be transformed. You need to be transformed. Not just have something on the outside that looks like it works. I love the phraseology that he uses when Samuel talks to us all. You're going to become another man. The person you used to be is no longer going to be there. Transformation leads us to even a revolution. Why? When we think of revolution, we think of actually taking over or, or rising up. And really, in a sense, when it comes to the spiritual man, that's exactly what it is. When the Spirit of the Lord comes in, he takes over what was there. He takes over and builds a new you. He takes over and you are no longer the same person. He gives you another attitude. He gives you another outlook. He gives you another mindset. He gives you another thought process. He gives you another thinking pattern. He gives you another look so that you begin to look different. Amen. The people came to Saul. The Bible tells us when we read the chapter, you read it down here in the chapter where or Saul began to prophesy. And the people came to Saul and they said, uh, you'll find this in verse number 11. They said, what is this? Uh, listen to this, somebody. What is this uh, that has come to pass on Saul, the son of Kish? Uh, amen. Somebody, let me tell you something. When you go through a transformation this year, when you are transformed, uh, something's going to come over you and it's going to be different than anything before. It's not going to be like a pledge that you made. If you'll get a hold of God and let God fill you with the Holy Ghost, there'll be a transformation in your life. And when people come and see you, they won't know the same you anymore. And somebody's going to say, what is this that has happened to the young
young man, what is this that's taking place in their life? Oh, I used to hear them talk like this. They don't talk like that anymore. I used to see them walk this way. They don't walk like that anymore. I used to hear them sing a song this way, but they don't sing that way anymore. They've been transformed. They have been changed from the inside out. They had a new makeup from the down from the floor to the top of their heads. They've been changed and rearranged. God has done something. The prophet saw Saul. They couldn't believe what they were hearing. What is this? Hallelujah. When you are transformed, somebody's going to say, what is this? Yeah. Hello, somebody. Come on here. Some of us don't realize it, that we, when we are transformed, even your, I used to say this all the time, even your dog is going to know when you get saved. Amen. When you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to be so changed that the neighbors are going to say, I don't hear the same strange things coming from that house over there anymore. When he comes out of the door, he speaks to me now. Oh, man, I can see him. He's not wobbling and staggering and coming in late at night. He's got his clothes on him. I remember hearing the scripture when Jesus, thank you, Holy Ghost, when Jesus took the, the devil out of the man that came out of the tomb, the, the Bible said he was cutting himself and naked. Some of you are going through resolutions and you're naked and you're bruised and the devil had you beating yourself down for so many years you need to get a hold of God that he can transform you from the inside and when they found the young man he was clothed and sitting in his right mind you need to get a hold of God and be transformed and you can sit around in your right mind oh praise God for that some of your neighbors are going to say what is this but I'm going to tell you right now friend you need to tell God I want to be transformed. I don't want to be changed and go back to do the same thing I used to do. I don't want to drink no more. I don't want to lie no more. I don't want to cheat no more. I don't want to fornicate anymore. I want to be transformed from the inside out. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My mind goes to Isaiah, chapter number 43 and 19. He listened to this. He said, Behold, I do a new thing. And listen to what God said. It shall spring forth. Now it shall spring forth. When Jesus came to this world, he was like a, 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 a refreshing breath of life to a dead soul. He was God with us. He sprang up as a tender root out of dry ground. He sprang forth. And let me tell you something. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, when God transforms you, you will spring forth. You will come up different than you used to be. You will spring forth. And look what he said. And he said, shall you not know it? Oh, look out, somebody. When you're transformed, everybody's going to know it. When you're transformed, it won't be no secret. When you're transformed, the world will begin to look at you different. The man will begin to talk to you different. The store owner will begin to treat you different. The people downtown will begin to say things and say, what is going on? Shall you not know it? You're going to know when God gives you the Holy Ghost. I don't know about people who say, I have the Holy Ghost, but I don't know when I have it. I want to tell you something. You need to be transformed, and then you're going to know. For God said, shall you not know it? It will spring forth, and you're going to know it. God's going to transform you. So, you're going to go up and you're going to be another man. Listen, somebody. God, I can imagine. I wonder, I didn't do the research. And I don't know how many people have gotten a, a New Year's resolution and gone back on them and never fulfilled them. But I can assure you that there are many of them. How do I know that? Well, let's just take this one thought. I do know this much. In the world of, of, of uh, exercise equipment, they tell me that that is one of the biggest places that people waste money is on exercise equipment. They get it in their garage. They use it for a couple of months, and they sit over in the corner until they sell it in a garage sale for a fraction of the cost. Hello, somebody. Am I helping somebody? And then another great thing that they say is a great waster of money. They just sign up to the gym. I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to put 
put my membership in and they get into the gym and in two or three months, maybe they'll go a few times, they quit going all together. Oh man, in the gym people are getting wealthy while everybody else is still getting fatter. Oh, come on somebody. Because why? There's no transformation. There's just a resolution that I'm going to try to do better. But oh, 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 when you get a hold of God, when you get a hold of the Holy Ghost, he'll make you over and you won't have to worry about no regular bill coming in. He'll give you the Holy Ghost for free, my friend. The transforming will come from the inside and work its way to the outside. You need to be transformed. Don't worry about the pledge. Don't worry about the promise. Just tell God if you can make me new. I'm here, Lord. Let me be your next customer. I'm right here, Lord. I need to be made over. Just let God know you want to be transformed. Amen. And he'll do it. Isaiah said, it'll spring forth. When God changes, he transforms. When God does it, it springs up. Saul began to prophesy. People didn't know what was going on. Thank you, Holy Ghost. My mind goes back. See, when you get transformed, it'll begin to show. Even though from, it comes from the inside, it'll begin to manifest itself on the outside. Watch this. Exodus chapter number 34. Moses was up in the mount for 40 days and 40 nights. See, we're going on a little fast right now. But some of us are eating on the side. Oh, just a little bit. And we get to eat it in the evening, you know. And that's all right. But Moses was up in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't eat any bread nor drink any water. How would you like to go on a fast like that? Oh, my God, help us, Lord. But thank God Almighty. But the Bible says, Listen to me. That Moses, when he came down from the mountain, he had in his hand the, the, the Ten Commandments. And the Bible says, and this is the part I really like, got that Moses came down and his face shone. It was so bright. They couldn't stand it. Aaron and the other people were looking at him. And they were afraid to come near to him because his face had shown. Why? When you get in the presence of God and you get transformed, you begin to shine like new men. Money. You begin to shine like never before. Somebody was saying, I got baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Somebody said, I feel different from my head to my feet. I know I've been changed. I've been rearranged because the Lord, Lord has filled me with the Holy Ghost. I've been transformed. When Moses came down, his face shone. They had to put a veil over Moses' face. When transformation is from God, it's for real. It's the real thing. Years ago, when I was a young man, I worked as a, a pizza delivery guy, part-time while I was in the Air Force. I used to deliver pizzas on the side just to pay off a little extra bills, you know. And I, I used to work with a guy from Nigeria. And I remember him. And every time somebody would do something, he didn't think they were being on the up and up. He would say, man, be for real. And uh, I, can't, I can't use that, 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 that Nigerian accent he used to have. But he would always say, be for real. Uh, be for real. That was, his, that was his thing. Be for real. Some of us need to know. Some of our resolutions are for real. Some of our resolutions are just phony. Some of us are like David. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You might recall David in the book of Psalms when he went to the king, Abimelech. And Abimelech knew David was a warrior. And the Bible says that David fiend himself to be a madman. He let spittle roll down his face. He changed his behavior. But that wasn't really David on the inside. He just did that for a facade to let them as a disguise. And it worked. Can I help somebody? Some of you need to stop disguising. Some of you need to stop living a fake life. Some of you need to stop living what's really not true. And you need to get a hold of God and say, God, I don't want to be a fake and a phony. I don't want to be a phony baloney. I want you to change me from the inside out. Hello, somebody. I want a transformation. I want a translation. I want a conversion. I want a revolution. I want to be new. I don't want to be old anymore. I want to be somebody different. Help me Lord, give me a transformation. Amen. You need a transformation. 
some thing. I'll just get my hair fixed. Maybe that'll do it. Friend, let me tell you something. That's not going to work. I had somebody tell me one time, maybe you've heard this yourself, that beauty is only skin deep. But they say ugly goes all the way to the bone. Now, I don't know where they got that from, but I can tell you what I know. If your heart is wrong, it don't matter how pretty you are in the face. Amen. You got a blackened heart. You got a problem. Amen. I've seen people. They look nice in a suit. Amen. But, uh, but, but criminals wear suits. Come on, somebody. Amen. So it doesn't matter because I get a nice suit on. But if my heart is still wrong, I'm still dirty. Jesus said it this way. If your heart is evil, he said if the eye has, has light in it, if you got one eye and it's good, then the whole body has light. But if that eye is blackened and it's darkened with sin, then is the whole body full of darkness. Friend, let me tell you something. We need to ask God for a transformation that we don't want to go anymore with just a mild change. Just something that makes us look a little better, feel a little better, talk a little better for a week or two. No, friend. We want to look, go to, and be completely made over. We want to be transformed. Amen. I'm challenging you this year to be transformed. The Bible talks about situations in the, in the scriptures where many people were changed. We have some biblical examples of Bible transformation. Where God got in the picture. Amen. My Bible tells me that Ezekiel said in 36 and 26, he said, I'm going to put a new heart in you. I'm going to get rid of that old spirit. I will take away the stony heart. Look what he said. A new heart also will I give you. This is what transformation is about. It's about newness. Amen. I remember growing up learning to work on cars and I would take a motor out of one vehicle that was blown up and put a brand new engine in there and it would run like new. Amen. Amen. Because why? Because it had a heart transplant. Hello, somebody. If you want to be transformed, you're going to have to ask God for a heart transplant. And our Bible tells me that there were other times when there were great transformations. You see on the day of Pentecost, we find it happening again there. When people were in the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell on all the people that were there, they meant they began to speak with other tongues. People thought they were crazy too. Oh yeah, they said it. These men man are filled with new wine. They're drinking. They're drunk in the morning at 9 o'clock. But oh no, Peter said, no, no. This is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. They were undergoing a transformation. You can look in the Bible and see for yourself. Look at the 12 disciples and how they acted before the Holy it goes and how they acted after they received it. Amen. Look for yourself and pattern and watch their lives, follow their lives after they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Completely different people, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Completely different. They weren't hiding, cowering down. They were bold. One occasion, Paul was stoned. They drug him out of the city, supposing he was dead. And the Bible says that he woke up and came to, and the next day went right back into the city and preached again. Why? Because the Holy Ghost transformed you. Saul was a shy man. The Bible says when they went to do the inauguration to give him the, uh, what they call in those days the coronation, when they went to do that and to put the crown on him and let him know you're the king now, that they looked around and they called all the families and they couldn't find Saul. Uh, the, the, the scripture says, behold, he is hidden himself in the, among the stuff. Uh, Saul was so shy, he was hidden, but it took God to transform him, to make him a king so that he would know how to ha handle himself, so he would know how to behave. Uh, God put another thought in him so that he'd be able to stand up. Sometimes you may feel that you're not able to do things, but I'm going to tell you something. When God transforms you, you'll be able to walk like God wants you to walk and talk like God wants you to talk. When he transforms you, you'll be able to do things you never thought you were able to do. That's why Paul said it this wise. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because when you're transformed, you're operating off a new circumstance. You're operating off of a new engine. You're operating off a new power. The Holy Ghost power. You're operating off of the anointing of the Holy Ghost and not just your own ghost. Come on, somebody. When you're transformed, you're operating off of God's power from the kingdom of heaven, not by might and not by power, said the Lord, but by my spirit, said the Lord. When you're transformed, it's the spirit of 
of God. Paul said it's no longer me, but the Spirit of God that dwells in me. It's not I that do it, but it's God that do it in me. He works with me. He shows me what I ought to do. He leads me by my hand and guides me on because I'm transformed now. I'm no longer my own. I belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to be transformed. Paul himself underwent a transformation. His conversion was very significant. Paul was walking on the way to Damascus. The Bible says in the book of Acts, whole light shined. Paul fell on the ground, blinded. The voice spoke to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. Amen. We know the story. Paul was such a bad man, such a mean individual, such a church hater. Amen. And when he, when the Lord sent him to Ananias to actually put his hand on him and so that he can recover his sight, because the Bible says he went around for three days blinded, and didn't eat anything. Amen. But somebody led him by the hand. And when he got to Ananias, the Ananias had heard from the Lord. And the Lord told Ananias, I want you to lay hands on him. Brother Saul that I, he may recover his sight. And Ananias said, Lord, maybe you made a mistake. I'm paraphrasing this, but you can find it in the book of Acts chapter number 9. An Ananias said, Lord, we've heard much things about this guy. Uh, this guy, he, he's done horrible things. And he's taken people to the death. He's persecuted your church. But the Lord said, go your way and lay your hands on him. Listen to this, somebody. For he, uh, he is a, a chosen vessel unto me. Come on, somebody. When you are transformed, you might have been a crook yesterday, but God will make you the saint tomorrow. You may have stole last week, but you'll steal no more. You may have been down one day, but you'll be up tomorrow. You may be lost, but now you'll be found. You may be turned around, but God will straighten you out. When you're transformed, he can use you no matter what your past was. That's why you need to be transformed, because God can use you even though you were broken. Even though you were beaten down. Some of us have been broken and beaten down for so long we don't think we're any good. That's the devil talking to you. But God is going to show you that if you're transformed, if you let him make you over. God said, I know my people Israel are going to be changing. He didn't want them to have a king, but they kept asking. That's why you've got to be careful what you ask for. Sometimes God will give it to you. They kept asking for a king and God gave them one. But because God loved them so much, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a man that I'm going to transform. And he's going to be somebody that will be better for you than if you just pick somebody else. Some of us don't realize it, but we have so many problems in this world today because we have leaders who are not yet transformed by God. Hello, somebody. we got people in position who know the rule of law, but they don't know the God who made the law. Amen. They got people in position who don't understand that all power comes from him that's on high. Yeah. Amen. When we can get somebody that will be transformed, God can do a great work. And I'm going to tell you right now in your life, don't you let the devil tell you that God doesn't want to do anything with you because he wants to transform you. And one day, friend, according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, we're all going to go through the great transformation. Paul says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, we shall be what? Change. Amen. Not only just change, this mortal body shall take on immortality. We're going to be changed so much to be renewed. Whatever Jesus is like, the Bible says we're going to be like him. Amen. I can't wait till God transforms us to be like him. This year, don't go through your old ritual. If you're one of those people who spend time writing down all your, your resolutions, all the things you should do, then I want you to let God know you want to be transformed. Let him know that this is a time you want to be different. This year you want to be different than the rest. Be transformed. Don't just go through the motions. Don't just make a pledge and go back on it. Don't just say, I want to lose a, a little bit of weight. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with you wanting to lose a few pounds. Nothing wrong along with us uh, uh, saying that I want to be a little bit better off here or there. I want to do better with my finances. But I'm going to tell you this, if you'll do it God's way, He'll help you take care of all those things. Be transformed from the inside out. And God will help you take care of all those things. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
And all these things shall be what? Added to you. So I guarantee you, friend, if you really want to do well, do what God tells you to do first. Be transformed from the inside out. Let him fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Let him take you to another level in your life to be transformed. And you will have an expression that the world will know. And you will look back and thank God that he changed you in a way that nobody else or nothing else could. Be transformed. Don't forget to do it God's way. And I guarantee you, I promise you, you'll get God's results. God bless you. We'll see you back next time.